Hell yeah. CBD infused. Here we go. Good morning, everybody. This is a live severe weather briefing. As the threat for a tornado outbreak across the southern U.S. remains, large portions of Mississippi, Alabama, central western Tennessee, even into uh, eastern Louisiana, uh, the threat of those uh, long track violent tornadoes continues on Thursday. Looks like uh, beginning as early as late morning on Thursday, but probably Thursday afternoon and the overnight period, I do expect that strong violent tornado potential to continue. Uh, on Thursday night as well. And there is a threat of isolated severe weather today too across central and northern Texas with a dry line moving across uh, central northern Texas later on this afternoon and evening. There's rapid moisture return happening so far this morning across southern Texas. Looking at the surface map, temperatures in northern Texas are in the 40s, including those dew points. But the uh, dew point down in southern Texas a rising dramatically up into the 60s. That warm front is going to rapidly lift off to the north into north Texas where there is a potential of isolated severe weather this evening and overnight tonight uh, with a uh, warm front uh, lifting north through southern and central Mississippi. Late night tonight there is a chance of severe weather. So my plan is to hit the road uh, later on this morning. I'm in uh, upstate South Carolina right now and my plan is to head west toward the heart of the moderate risk area. Right now, I'm probably going to target uh, Columbus down toward Yazoo City area, maybe further northeast. I might wait in the Columbus area uh, to kind of target that northwestern Alabama area by later afternoon. But really, eastern Mississippi, central northeastern Mississippi and northwestern Alabama looks to be uh, where that main zone is going to reside. And we're going to look at uh, the short-range ensemble forecast. We're going to look at some of the HREF output on the Storm Prediction Center website. We're going to break down the individual models. I'm going to tell you also what makes this setup different uh, from the previous one on March 17 when there was also an outbreak of uh, tornadoes across a similar area. That day started off and really the entire event focused along a surface pressure trough from southern Mississippi into uh, western Alabama. Basically those supercells trained over an area just to the south of Meridian toward Tuscaloosa to the south of Tuscaloosa. Uh, there was a warm frontal zone as well over uh, central Alabama, even a renegade supercell that developed and crossed uh, I-65 that was anchored on that warm front. But really along that surface pressure trough from just south of Meridian, Waynesboro area uh, through uh, Selma, uh, through south, and even the Birmingham and Tuscaloosa areas uh, saw those tornadoes. And that was more of a closed upper level low a little bit earlier in the uh, evolution of the upper level cyclone. Uh, this upper level storm system is shearing out over top uh, a strong subtropical high that's anchored over the southeastern Gulf of Mexico. And uh, this upper level storm system is a little bit later in its life cycle, more of a uh, shearing out system lifting up over top and ejecting uh, to the north of that subtropical ridge. Uh, but it is leaving behind a low level jet, a strong low level jet, 50 to 60 knots uh, in its wake. So even though the surface low lifts up, up north of the Ohio River Valley, uh, southern Illinois. Uh, that surface low lifts more of a northeasterly direction with that stronger subtropical high over the southeastern Gulf of Mexico. It leaves behind a channel of strong low-level wind shear and uh, immense instability. The parameter space is actually higher than it was on March 17. Uh, with the upper-level storm system shearing out, you get some more dry air, a stronger elevated mixed layer, uh, some greater instability for this setup, and a greater low-level jet. Uh, more directional shear uh, as well throughout the warm sector with those south-southeasterly surface winds uh, whipping around to southwesterly at 50 to 60 knots across the moderate risk area. So the parameter space is actually a lot higher across the warm sector for strong tornadoes. And that's why I do think strong violent tornadoes, long track supercells are certainly possible. Here you can see the tornado probabilities from the Storm Prediction Center, 15% hatch area. 
And I wouldn't be surprised if this is upgraded to a high risk. Uh, the short range models have been showing a little bit of a more messy convective evolution, but even with that, they're still going to be uh, embedded supercells capable of producing strong, violent tornadoes. You may remember that EF4 uh, tornado near the Columbus area uh, just a couple of years ago. Uh, kind of a similar setup to that. That also had a messy evolution, but you had a perfect supercell embedded within that precipitation that was able to take full advantage of that, uh, the, the strong thermodynamic and kinematic environment producing that uh, EF4 tornado uh, there, I believe, Jefferson County. But this one is definitely different than the uh, last setup on uh, March 17. And I'm going to show you why here briefly with a three kilometer NAM upper level output. This is the storm system right here that is shearing out. Uh, this is the anticyclone down in the southeastern Gulf of Mexico. Uh, stronger high pressure to the southeast of this storm system, which is causing uh, this system uh, to really peak across the southern plains in its maturity. And uh, it's definitely past its prime. You can look at this as a uh, basically a senior citizen of upper level storm systems as it's shearing out, but it still has a lot of energy, uh, a lot of strong mid and upper level flow. And in fact, that fanning out of the mid and upper level flow here on the northwest side of that subtropical ridge across a large multiple state area with a channel of a strong uh, low level jet of 50 to 60 knots being left in the wake of this surface flow that's ejecting toward the Ohio River Valley is actually creating a more favorable situation for a tornado outbreak than on March 17 where it was more of a closed off upper level low uh, just meandering in to Dixie Alley. Uh, then it sheared out a little bit further east uh, down the line with a weaker subtropical ridge but you're still able to uh, generate uh, favorable thermodynamics and kinematics for those wind fields uh, for a potential outbreak of tornadoes. But actually that later evolution of the closed upper level low on March 17 caused a weaker parameter space for those strong tornadoes. They had about 150 to 250, zero to one kilometer storm relative felicity throughout the warm sector. Not quite as strong of a low level jet as we're gonna see on Thursday uh, with this setup, uh, with this ejecting, shearing out upper level storm system. Sometimes these systems can shear out like this too early and then they can cause all the low level winds to veer out and become more southwesterly throughout the warm sector. Uh, but this system, the timing is just perfect enough where it's going to lead to surface pressure falls all the way down well to the south of the surface low. And that's going to cause those uh, surface winds to be more of a south southeasterly direction way to the south of the surface low into the actual warm sector throughout uh, Mississippi there. But this is the upper level storm system. You can see another one coming in behind it that I think is going to be uh, less favorable for severe weather in terms of its timing and the evolution. This one right here, though, just timed perfectly enough, shearing out over top that ridge to maximize directional shear, too. So down here in Mississippi, you can see more of these west southwesterly mid and upper level winds. Those are over top south southeasterly winds at the surface. Uh, so that directional shear and the speed shear all coming together to produce the perfect monster for wind shear and uh, long track uh, violent tornadoes across this area that so often gets hammered uh, during the early spring months. And uh, here is that ejecting surface low. Uh, this is at 20Z on Thursday, uh, the three kilometer NAM uh, forecast. So uh, this is at 3 p.m. Uh, Central Daylight Time and it shows a relatively weaker surface low lifting up toward the Ohio River Valley, basically right along the Ohio River uh, there in uh, southern Illinois. And uh, there is a pressure trough right along, surface pressure trough all the way down. And uh, that's going to cause these surface winds to be to remain backed and out of a south-southeasterly direction throughout the warm sector, despite this sheared out trough bringing in west-southwesterly winds aloft that will be more normal to that initiating boundary. And that's gonna cause supercells, uh, the, the predominant convective mode to remain supercells moving off of that line. You're also gonna get prefrontal convergence bands that develop some renegade supercells that develop out ahead of that. Also with the, some renegades uh, could develop with the uh, uh, warm front uh, differential heating boundary lifting off to the north through northwestern Alabama, even out ahead of the main convective line. But on March 17, you had a more closed upper level low earlier in its life cycle, and that caused everything to barrel a little bit further south into the warm sector, whereas this one's ejecting off to the northeast, but leaving a channel of pressure falls in its wake and a strong low level jet, relatively back to surface winds, and a very favorable environment uh, for strong tornadoes. 
across the uh, worm sector. And uh, here is that low-level jet, and notice how it retains its strength and an even stronger strength well to the south of that surface low. And uh, that's because of these pressure falls off to the west, uh, where the surface low is lifting up through the Ohio River Valley. You actually have a little bit of a weakening in that low-level jet. So really the prime environment is a little bit removed from that surface low track further south across central and eastern Mississippi into Alabama. And that's also where the strongest core of that low-level jet is located. And because this is a little bit further south of that surface low track, kind of near the base of the trough, you get more westerly upper-level winds too, which is enhancing that low-level shear even further compared to March 17, giving broader hodographs, 0 to 1 kilometer storm relative velocities in excess of 300 out there. And you've got a lot of Kate because of these more westerly upper-level winds uh, uh, passing over the higher terrain here. Uh, leads to a more stout elevated mix layer or that dry air just above the ground and more favorable instability conditions for a tornado threat. And we've also got big time dew points out there uh, rising into the low 70s across central southern Mississippi into southeastern Louisiana and western Alabama. A bit of a uh, pseudo differential heating boundary in place here across northern Mississippi and northwestern Alabama. Two points into the mid 60s, they'll go all the way up into central western Tennessee, where there's additionally a uh, threat of strong, violent tornadoes. But this is at 22Z on the three kilometer NAM. The high resolution NAM shows these deeper dew points, the upper uh, into the 70s, lifting up into northeastern Mississippi up toward the Tupelo area by 5 p.m. You got this main convective line back near the I 55 corridor by 5 p.m., the threat of renegades out ahead of that as well. Looking at the thermodynamics, this is that really stout instability axis we were talking about. Capes uh, basically approaching 3,000 out here. You can see these little holes within the cape axis. Those are renegade supercells developing central northeastern Mississippi by this time, as well as into western Alabama. And a very arcing. Uh, uh, initiating boundary here or a front so those west southwesterly mid and upper level winds will be able to track those supercells easily off this boundary the upper level winds are have a large orthogonal component uh, to that initiating boundary which is more of a north south direction and you've got these west southwesterly mid and upper level winds quite a prime environment for strong long track tornadoes this is at 700 and you've got 700 winds approaching 70 knots here over this zone, east central Mississippi, northeastern Mississippi, and in northwestern Alabama, even into central Tennessee. Strongest low level jet looks to be, uh, according to the three kilometer NAM by 5 p.m., is across northeastern Mississippi, northwestern Alabama, and central Tennessee. So I think that different than the March 17 outbreak, uh, which was more of a closed upper level low targeting more of a surface trough further south. You would probably want to hedge further south as well, uh, down near the Meridian area into west central Alabama. This upper level system is later in its maturity. It's shearing out, lifting off to the northeast. The main surface low is in the Ohio River Valley. So with this event from a storm chaser perspective, you'd want to hedge a little bit further north and northeast on this one. And that's why I think northeastern Mississippi into northwestern Alabama, even central Tennessee would be the ideal target area. Uh, by mid to late afternoon tomorrow. 20Z by 3 p.m. That main axis is back near the I-55 corridor all the way down to Jackson. But look at that. Approaching 70 knots, one kilometer above the ground at 3 p.m. there. Northeastern Mississippi into western Alabama. Go to 21Z and see how that low-level jet ejects off to the northeast. Probably going to be favoring kind of a Columbus up toward a Tupelo target uh, off to uh, northwestern Alabama. Florence area could definitely be very dangerous supercell environment out there. And these supercells are going to lift into central Tennessee, including the Nashville area. But it looks like the three kilometer NAM is definitely honing in on this zone across northeastern Mississippi mid to late afternoon for that strong tornado threat. Supercells as well into western Tennessee there. Not quite as much instability available for those storms, but enough uh, to generate 
that tornado potential. And look at these. Not surprising that the three kilometer NAM is maintaining this discrete storm mode, multiple bands of supercells, and that's because the mid and upper level winds are more west southwesterly, sufficiently orthogonal to these initiating boundaries, these convergent bands. And this is at 6 p.m. Likely strong tornadoes ongoing across northwestern Alabama into central Tennessee, including the Nashville area. Need to watch out tomorrow evening. And then the nocturnal threat begins, and they're still maintaining a supercellular mode after sunset, 8 or 9 p.m. That main convective line then starts to head in toward the Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, Alabama areas to the east of Nashville. There's that convective line across northern Alabama. Starting to die out as the shear lifts off to the northeast of it at that point. As the shear lifts up over the southern Appalachians to the northeast, but still some decent 300 plus 0 to 1 kilometer shear lagging behind even by 10, 11 p.m. Thursday night across northern Alabama. Definitely is a threat of uh, nocturnal tornadoes continuing up there. And as some people have noted, uh, some of the latest HRRR runs have shown a bit more of a messy convective evolution. So this appears to be an outlier uh, by the HRRR, but it definitely is a, a failure mode that needs to be recognized. Uh, but still, even with this relatively messy evolution, with storms erupting everywhere in this warm advection regime along these convergent lines, pressure troughs, this is kind of the main initiating boundary here, the three kilometer NAM has a much clearer open warm sector, whereas some of these latest models of the HRRR have a bunch of these cells just going nuts with supercell storms up and down the I-55 corridor into central Alabama. This does seem like a bit of an outlier in terms of the number of storms because then the HRRR starts settling in to a more expected pattern with kind of these multiple bands of tornadic supercells moving into eastern Mississippi by 21Z by 4 or 5 p.m. Still a very favorable environment for strong tornadoes here. Central Tennessee all the way down into northwestern Alabama. But this is a pretty scary run for tennis, uh, central Tennessee as well, showing numerous tornado-producing supercells there by Thursday evening. And uh, it's not surprising that central Tennessee and further north is included in this outbreak, different than the March 17 outbreak with that surface low ejecting northeast toward the Ohio River Valley, bringing the strongest wind shear off to the north and east as well. May want to target kind of a Tupelo, Florence, and Nashville type of a triangle. This is at 6 p.m. Very dangerous environment across northern Alabama here, as depicted by the HRRR. Just for fun, we can look at forecast photographs, but they're all going to be PDS type photographs. But just so we know exactly what a perfect photograph for strong tornado potential looks like. This is it. You've got about a 17 knot due south southerly surface wind, and these are probably more backed earlier in the afternoon toward 4 or 5 p.m. in eastern Mississippi. A little bit of veering happening, but your one kilometer wind near 70 knots is creating basically near 50 knots of zero to one kilometer shear within this photograph. And those Southwesterly, even west southwesterly, mid and upper level winds are bringing that storm motion, a strong storm motion, 50 to 60 knots further right. A lot of area within the hodograph curve and that storm motion vector there. A lot of directional shear in the low levels, flipping around to west southwesterly winds in the upper troposphere. So, this is definitely a textbook hodograph for strong tornado potential. And there could be a bit of a messy convective mode. Uh, the HRRR is showing a lot of storms, even a greater number of storms than some of the model runs were shown yesterday. But I think that as we go toward the 12Z HRRR, we'll probably see a little bit less. And here is the 12Z. This is at 20Z. So this looks to be more like an accurate depiction of mature supercells across central Mississippi into central Alabama. The HRRR does also likes this area between about 4 or 5 p.m. across northeastern Mississippi. 
seems to uh, hint at a west to east oriented pressure trough for a differential heating boundary again in the HRRR here from central Mississippi into central Alabama, which seems to be a focus for some of those longer track supercell storms. Uh, the three kilometer NAM doesn't show this as much, but just kind of shows a clean ejection of the wind shear toward central Tennessee. But this HRRR is showing this west east oriented pressure trough or differential heating boundary a bit as an air, a corridor for those supercells to track. It looks to be a little bit further north than last time, but basically from Columbus up toward Tuscaloosa. And then by 22Z, it lights up that northern mode as well. Northeastern Mississippi into northwestern Alabama into central Tennessee. Uh, bring in some supercells by 6 p.m. as well into the Tuscaloosa, Birmingham area. Dangerous supercell storms here. Kind of squeezing out the central Tennessee mode into northwestern Alabama a bit as these dominate along the uh, northern periphery of those deeper dew points. The 70 plus, you're talking about a 70, 71 dew point versus a 66, 67 further north. Probably not enough of a difference to make a difference between strong tornado potential, but it does look like some of those more vigorous supercells track along that corridor from central uh, Mississippi through the Columbus area, up through Tuscaloosa and areas off to the north, and then eventually moving into northern Georgia by evening. Big time low-level jet in its wake. 60 to 70 knot low level jet. You'll probably get some tornadic supercells right on the nose of that low level jet pop. Even into northern Georgia there by 1Z. And then the event starts to weaken as the system lifts off to the northeast. And this is at 19Z. Basically, the whole state of Mississippi in a 50 plus knot low level jet there. Let's look at the uh, surface base instability across the state. 3,000 Cape, just dominating. Central Eastern Mississippi there at 19Z. Evidence of some renegades in the HRRR models here. Even down, down near the Meridian area toward Tuscaloosa. To the east again of that main instability axis. Three kilometer cape, quite a bit of three kilometer cape as well over Alabama, suggesting the potential for renegades is high once again. Let's look at the zero to one kilometer bulk shear. This is at 22Z bulk shear, 40 to 50 knots out here across large portions of Mississippi into Alabama. You can look at some of the composite indices as well for a significant tornado perimeter. Everything's maxed out. Look at this. Across eastern Mississippi, and that's at 21Z. So really any updraft that goes up in this environment that's surface-based, relatively unimpeded inflow, even impeded inflow, is going to have a chance of producing a violent tornado across the majority of Mississippi into central Tennessee, a majority of Alabama there as well. But don't forget, we've also got a slight risk today uh, across North Texas, including the DFW Metroplex, southeastern Oklahoma, down into central Texas, into the Texas Hill Country there, and this marginal risk for late night tonight with that warm front lifting north. Uh, through Mississippi could also have a tornado threat. I'm going to be monitoring that threat tonight as I'm arriving into the target area. But one thing to note is the surface map right now. This is definitely going to be late arrival of the moisture. The dew points right now across the DFW Metroplex are about 40. And then you can see these clouds and stratus deck off to the south, south Texas. Dew points rise up into the lower 50s, even the 70s along the coast there. And this uh, warm front is going to lift north gradually through the day. You can already see uh, the winds behind the cold front starting to shift to a more easterly direction with the arrival of that upper level storm system. A warm front is going to come along the coast here in southern Louisiana later on this evening and lift north through southern Mississippi. 
We can see that uh, evolution of the warm front using the wrap analysis here. Let's go a little further west. And here you can see the stable air well to the north of that front. This is where all the moisture is, southern Texas, just offshore of Louisiana. And as you go two hours out, look at that surge, rapid moisture infection through the Rio Grande Valley into the Texas Hill Country. Surface base instability, a bit of a warm front there, lifting up toward the San Angelo area. Surface base instability as well into the southern Texas Hill Country. And then it rapidly ejects by about 20 Z, by 2 or 3 p.m., almost a mixing down of those dew points and rapid evolution of surface space instability starting to arrive in the DFW Metroplex. Looks like some convection starting to develop too to the southwest of DFW, out near the Brownwood area, down toward Brady. Uh, the development of some severe weather. And easterly surface winds there could uh, locally en enhance those hodographs, but even with those easterly surface winds, you're looking at storm relative velocities of about 100 to 150 borderline for that tornado threat and that's why you got the 2% the tornado threat out there across Texas today. The low level jet is slower to intensify during the day today due to that shape of the upper trough but you've still got about 20 knot 850 winds right at the nose of that jet into the uh, hill country to the southwest of DFW. So there definitely is a chance of afternoon severe weather by 3 or 4 p.m. to the southwest of DFW developing there and then moving to the northeast. Even got a little blob of some significant tornado parameter down there. Central Texas and a nice... Cape axis feeding up into the Texas Hill Country here, 1,500 to 2,000 Cape by 21Z. You can see that warm front, little pseudo warm front here with some surface base instability lifting up into the DFW Metroplex by late afternoon. And there are those supercells, hailers developing supercell structures. You've got plenty of bulk shear for a supercell threat across Texas with mid and upper level winds in excess of 50 knots out there. Bulk shear in excess of 40 knots. Zero to one kilometer EHI composite index here between surface base instability and zero to one kilometer shear. Basically on the northwest side of this near the Brady area. San Saba looks quite favorable for supercells this late afternoon. Decent hodographs too for a tornado potential. You've got some good low level instability, steep low level lapse rates, a lot of directional shear in the low levels of the atmosphere there going from east southeasterly to southwesterly, even though that low level jet is about 20 to 25 knots to west southwesterly aloft, 60, 65 knots, 70 knots up there. But even though you've got your magnitude of the winds are all below 30 knots here in the lowest two kilometers, you have a lot of directional shear with these east-southeasterly east surface winds, and that helps to elongate and curve out that hodograph. You can see this warm front just offshore southeastern Louisiana. That's the zone that I'm going to be watching this evening and tonight, late night tonight, as that lifts north. But instead of trying to chase both of these setups, I'm just going to focus on the Dixie Alley event on Thursday. Mississippi into Alabama, Central Tennessee. And here's that warm front by midnight starting to move into southern Mississippi there. Could be the focus for late night into the morning. Severe weather. We're going to wake up the morning, Thursday morning, with quite a bit of cape across the Jackson area. Warm front lifting north, surging north through the Mississippi River Valley there. But there is definitely a chance of some supercell storms, hail producers, maybe an isolated tornado across.
the Texas Hill Country, well southwest of DFW. And there you can see 7, 8 p.m., some of these tail end supercell storms. West of Waco there could have a tornado potential. Uh, HRRR has a pair of supercell storms in the Texas Hill Country, just on the northwest side of that instability, right on those 60 dew points there. And those 60 dew points lifting north into um, DFW today. Could be a couple hail producers, even an isolated noodle across DFW by 5 to 7 p.m. As it as those uh, supercell storms cluster together into more of a MCS across northeast Texas with a couple of supercell storms across central Texas. Could be a couple of tornado warnings later on today out there. Brownwood, San Saba. I probably should be chasing these first and then blasting all night to the target area and chasing Thursday. But I decided I learned my lesson after the last event where I got all those tornadoes in the Texas Panhandle. Then I was a little bit fatigued by the time I got to Dixie Alley. And that likely played a role in me missing some of those tornadoes. But definitely could be some supercell storms, severe hail, even some tornadoes uh, arriving by the DFW Metroplex by 6 or 7 p.m. out there. Just shows you how in the southern plains you can go from a dew point of 40 to a severe weather environment pretty easily. And that's what's going to happen here across DFW going from this morning through the late afternoon and the evening hours. But a majority of that cape hangs south into central Texas into the Texas Hill Country down there. Where a couple of those supercells could feed off of that environment. with a uh, weak low-level jet compensated by directional shear. A little bit of a nose of a low-level jet here into the DFW area, helping to proliferate that cluster of supercells that's going to move into the area through this evening. And there's that warm front starting to move into southern Louisiana, the lift of which fueled by these uh, 30 to 40 knot one-kilometer winds, setting the stage for the big tornado outbreak across the southern U.S., Mississippi, Alabama, into Tennessee there. So that's the uh, weather briefing for today. And uh, the main story, of course, is this moderate risk uh, issued last night. Very possible that could be upgraded to a high risk, uh, especially on the precedent of the high risk for March 17. I think the parameter space looks to be even more supportive of strong, violent, long-track tornadoes across this environment. Despite uh, that outlier of the HRRR showing a less clean warm sector and just numerous storms, I think uh, that stout elevated mix layer, the presence of a cap is going to suppress that convection until about 19 or 20 Z. And then you're going to see those supercells erupt probably closer to 18 Z across central Mississippi there. So thank you everybody for joining me today for this weather report. Now is the time to dial in those severe weather safety plans. You guys know what to do here across the southern U.S., Keep those weather radios charged. Information saves lives and the access to a storm shelter, uh, those above and below ground storm shelters. Uh, if you live in a mobile home park, I definitely have a plan in place. Maybe stay with a friend that has a storm shelter uh, that may have a, and stay tuned to those watches and warnings. Stay within range of that storm shelter. Uh, definitely going to be a dangerous day tomorrow, Thursday here across the majority of the state of Mississippi into a, a large portion of central northern Alabama and uh, central and western Tennessee, and even down into large portions of Alabama and Louisiana. So thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. And I'm going to start heading toward my target area here in the southern U.S., about to leave uh, this morning. Thank you, everybody. Never stop chasing.